I'm excited about Common Core. I think that it's a great departure from that very teacher-centered classroom, taking things back to a student-centered classroom in districts that have been very um, limiting on their teachers in terms of what types of pedagogy you're allowed to practice and, and keep everything very direct instruction. Now suddenly we're having conversations about project-based learning. Um, we're talking about the meaningful integration of technology. And I think that that's a really great wave of transition to, to ride as a profession. And I also think that it's more about qualitative shifts than anything that could really be quantified. And I, maybe that's the thing that I worry about the most with implementation is, is just this idea that Common Core could be reduced to some sort of quantitative checklist um, when really we're talking about a massive shift in terms of how learning takes place, what it looks like in our classroom, and the idea that it's centered around the student as an individual rather than what the teacher says or, or wants to construct. It's all about teachable moments mm -hmm. and having the opportunity not to be, not to go by the pace guide, the pacing guides that are Monday through Friday are doing this and you know, who cares if you haven't mastered this or whatever. It's about an opportunity where, I remember a situation in the classroom, um, it was raining and then all of a sudden it got cold and, and it was hailing and you know, everybody wants to you know, jump again second grade. So I have one student that's running around the classroom um, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, chicken little, chicken little, and I'm trying to teach, you know, fractions. So it's like, okay, guys, let's just, here's a teachable moment, let's all go to the door. I went outside, pelting with hail, you know, and grabbed, you know, grabbed a handful of, of hail balls, and let, all right, we went on to the computer, looked up what was going on, and there, so math became, math became not according to the pacing guide, math became the teachable moment that we don't often have and, and it was okay to do that. And that's being able to just run with whatever gets people excited in the classroom. I feel I really have a measuring stick. I have a measuring stick now. Um, I'm not giving a, you know, a, a test with bubbling. I'm not giving, you know, <laughs> Uh, multiple guests, you know, do my students really get it or, gosh, you guys missed, what happened today? Well, Mr. B, I had a bad day or, you know, something happened at home, but now I can really, that's why I just bubbled everything, you know, you only need to bubble one, why'd you bubble all three, what's up, you know, but now I have a measuring stick to say, did you really get this? You know, I put a lot of rigor, I put a lot of purpose, I put a lot of, you know, everything that I had into this test. Now I can measure the effectiveness of me. Not so much my students. Did I teach this in the way it should have been taught? That they, in fact, responded in a manner which I would expect if they knew the material. So that's why I'm pretty excited about Common Core. I mean, I hear the terms, the verbiage out there. It's an investigative tool. You handle it like an investigator. Well, that's right down my alley. I mean, I can embrace that. So you look at it from a different perspective. But now I have a measuring stick, and I keep saying that, but it really is to see if uh, my students are really learning what they should be learning. And, you know, when you were a kid and you went up to your parents and you asked them a question uh, about something that was science or something that was occurring out there, they didn't start off from the very beginning and teach you every single concept. You know, if they ask you, you know, if you ask about a falling star or an asteroid, you know, you got their explanation and it inspired your curiosity and made you go back and look more. And that's what Linda is saying about this. We have those teachable moments and it's to inspire those students. And the next time you teach a lesson, they're more engaged because they know that you're that person that's gonna give them the answers. Um, and I treat my classrooms like that. I mean, once we figured out the diameter of uh, a jellyfish in an algebra class, which was a geometry problem. But they all bought in, they were excited about it because I had found a picture of one, uh, well, I'd, I'd taken a picture of one that was on a beach. And I, I'm sure they, they carried that outside the classroom. They're very curious with it. And I think that that's what Common Core is really going to do. It's going to allow us to generate that curiosity. I mean, I teach advanced placement statistics, and it's Common Core every day. So I've been teaching Common Core really for seven years now. Those problems are all uh, relevant. None of them are skill-based. Uh, they all ask why. They ask, why did you choose this method? They make the students read critically. Um, and so I, I saw the benefits that my seniors are getting. And now that my ninth grade algebra one students are getting it, um, they're, it, by the time they're seniors, they're gonna be so much richer. And they're gonna have those critical thinking skills, they're gonna have those reading skills. Um, we just have to keep it relevant. We have to integrate those teachable moments. Yeah, and again, just tie into that, 
you know, in the past, if you had to follow the pacing guide, what have you, from Vallejo to San Francisco, you'd have to take the ferry. Now they understand they could go down to San Jose, they could go north, they could, <laughs> you know, they could take bar. There's all kinds of choices now that allows for creativity. They don't have that one, oh, you have to take the ferry, there's no other way, you know, but yeah, it just allows for all that. I'm sorry. You no, that's right. okay. It's great. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. I come from that generation because I've been in this business a long time that we were not taught educational jargon. We just weren't. And so when this whole thing of Common Core came to me several years ago, I just sort of was like, I don't know what this is. What are we talking about here? And as we started to have conversations about this, everybody was telling me, Michael, you do Common Core like nobody else does right now. <laughs> because you're, in your music class, you are teaching so many things on so many different levels. So for instance, you know, we're, we're taking this beautiful piece of um, sacred French music, and I'm teaching foreign language. I'm teaching um, them to work together, to, to truly work together in a way that they don't anywhere else. In, in many classes, you know, what you get on that test is your grade, but in choir, you have to work together. That vowel has to be unified. The tone has to be unified. The pitch has mm -hmm. to be unified. When one fails, everyone fails. Mm -hmm. And so we're teaching them these lessons of, of working together in ways that are so beneficial beyond the high school classroom, beyond the college classroom. And this idea of creativity, when I look into students' eyes and I say, what are you feeling right now after having sung that passage? I want words. And I don't want good. I want something that's expressive. My English teachers love me for that because I'm increasing vocabulary. And so these constant ties of, you know, of English, of going to historical context for the poetry that we're looking at, of looking at uh, social justice issues. Right mm -hmm. now I'm conducting a piece with my advanced women's choir that's right out of the 1960s freedom movement. And it's teaching these these young women that there was a, a an African American female voice that was fed up with racism in America, and they're now going to sing that on stage. And it's not just about singing a pretty song anymore; it's about everything that's wrapped into that music and having those connections made that are so significant for the students. I am so excited about Common Core; I can't stand it, and I want to go into other classrooms and have helped them discover what I've discovered in music. People who, for whom I have great respect, they're going, oh, yay, Indiana just got rid of its common core. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, folks, let's not so be so fearful about this. Um, can we test this? I don't know. I really don't. I think what you've said about quantifying and qualifying, I know that in my classroom, it's pretty darn hard to measure. It really is but you also know when it's really good. So I'm gonna trust this process right now and hope that we figure out how to measure this if, even if we don't have to or have to. I'm gonna be patient with it. But I think just going too in, into the whole teamwork and collaboration, why are we doing this? Jessica talked earlier about 21st century, century skills and what do corporations want of their potential employees? In second grade, Last week we were doing a math problem and I said, okay, we sit in pods of four and so I said work together as a team and try to figure out how to solve this one problem. There's eight pods in the classroom, four different ways to solve it. They all got the same answer, but they did it four different ways, kind of like how do you get to, you know, to San Jose. And so one group was standing up and they, they had this answer and I did it this way and they had to have a spokesperson. And the other person stood up and their spokesperson, I respectfully disagree with you guys because we feel that this is, this is the way to do it. We're getting the same answer. So just even how to agree and disagree. And again, right. and, you know, because in second grade they could say, you know, oh, you're, you know, you're, we're going to call you the S word. You're stupid, you know. <laughs> um, but they're learning how to collaborate. Oh, I respectfully disagree. Oh, you know what? We agree with you because, and they're citing their evidence. We disagree with you because this is the evidence that we have and already at six and seven years old if they're doing this again you know they're going to be ready when it gets to the deeper level critical thinking skills as they as they get older absolutely 
Well, and I think when we're opening up room for student choice and student voice and assignments and execution, um, there's just such unlimited potential with that. Like I, I teach in a one-to-one -one classroom, so right now my students use all use Chromebooks and we have iPads and a lot of other tech resources, but it's not about them reaching the right answer of making a screencast. It's about them choosing a tech tool to accomplish the purpose of, of sharing what they've learned. So maybe they're screencasting, maybe they're making a presentation, maybe they're filming a video, maybe they're you know, doing a digital posters. It, it almost doesn't matter what route they're choosing to take as long as they can provide that evidence of learning, and they do. And there's no better engagement than choosing how you want to show what you've learned.